Greetings everyone, 3D Hero here, and welcome to today's latest mix up build, to where I'll be focusing on a switch axe build that incorporates exhausting monsters and making them completely vulnerable to your charge attacks. I like to call this build the Exhaust King set, as generally you'll be the only one standing in the end, but also because the armor set looks quite snazzy for my hunter. So this build came in mind from a Reddit user called the Chindium, who did a build based around exhausting the monster and using this opportunity to do large amount of damage to the monster. Now that build focuses around exhausting and more power from the build, and while it does look really good and functions extremely well against many monsters, I felt like there could have been some room for improvements to where you could pull off more damage and still get the main powerful benefit that the build can provide. So in the end, I decided to use this mix set as a blueprint and built from there my own version of the exhaust build. Now, focus on the build, the weapon you'll be using is the Jaguar's Raider 3, as it's the only switch axe weapon in the game to have the exhaust fire built into it. Which may look lackluster at first, but once you combine it with other parts of the following sets and skills, then you'll see it's really not that underrated. As the current damage, skills and exhaust looks fine on their own, I decided to improve on them with the following. I increased the base charm as the weapon so it can last longer and do extra damage with a handicraft free charm, while also increasing the critical hit damage you do with weakness exploit free skill, and increased the base damage your weapon with a level 1 elemental skill. Then I decided to increase the amount of DPS you can do while the monster is warring at you with a level 5 earplugs. Focus on increasing the amount of time you can use in your amp charge state while also increasing the exhaust damage you do to the monster with a level 3 stamina thief, level 1 power prolonger, and level 2 focus skill. Lastly, I then decided to prevent myself from being stunned for too long with a level 2 steel fast skill, and prevent myself from being tripped up by monsters' small attacks so often with a level 1 flinch free skill, and also decided to focus a lot more on avoiding monsters' attacks very swiftly with a level 2 evade extender. I have also went ahead and augmented the weapon to have an attack, health and affinity increase, so the weapon can allow you to be a lot more aggressive in terms of damage, while at the same time allowing you to get a bit of health back. If you want, you could take out the attack increase or health increase augment and replace it with an extra jewel slot, so that you can max out your steed fast and not ever worry about being stunned. This is entirely up to you as it depends on how aggressive you'll be and how many times you think you may get stunned by certain monsters. If you don't want to go with steed fast, you could go with a vitality instead, but like I said, it's entirely up to you what you want to go with the skill. Overall, this should push your critical hits to 60%, attack damage for your weapon to 805, and increase your weapon's blue sharpness by a large amount so it can last longer in most fights. With everything in place, your build will allow you to tie out monsters with ease as you can push through some of the monsters' attacks and wars with your maxed out earplugs, and allow you to go into your charge state and start draining the monster of everything it has, to the point of where it can't fight back and you can proceed to do some very nice damage to the monster. Now, the way I play against the monster is that first I engage with either a light poke attack or a light charge attack to get the monster's attention. Once the monster sees me and starts to roar, I then proceed to attack the monster as much as I can around the weak points and legs, while also trying to dodge most of their heavy hitting attacks. You don't want to be too greedy with your attacks, and just want to look for an opportunity to where you can go into your charge amp state and start to take the monster's stamina away as much as possible. Usually, I notice monsters tend to use up most of their stamina when they're enraged, so this is the opportunity you want to try and take. And go into your charge state mode and attack the monster with a few light and heavy attacks. Now, don't worry about overusing your charge amp attacks, as it will recover quickly with your focus skill 2 in check. And do remember, with your stamina thief skill, it will stack with your exhaust charge attacks, so you can take out large chunks from the monster's stamina reserve. Now, if you're playing cautiously and you're playing good, and carry on attacking the monsters and such, the monster will either slow down and start to draw, fall over because you damage their legs so much, or stop in place and start to draw. When any of these things happen, then you can proceed to be aggressive on the monster and do a large damaging combo attack that will ultimately make you look badass, but at the same time allow you to mow through the monster's health. And that's generally how you just want to play with most monsters. Just play cautiously at first, look for opportunities to attack the monster, make sure you attack the monster's legs so you can trip them off as much as possible. And then when you go into your charge state, try and use your normal, say if you're on PlayStation, your normal circle or triangle attacks. Now you could go ahead and do that latching attack onto the monster, which does that does strain the monster's stamina very quickly. However, I found that you probably get more better results by doing your standard attacks onto the monster. Plus, your charge amp state lasts longer. So why not give this setup a try on monsters that use a lot of stamina, like Andronath and Odagwan for example and see how well you can tire these two monsters out, as these two monsters are common for using up a lot of energy, and using this build against them is quite a bonus. Play it in solo, test it out, see how you feel, and if you like it, well I'm pretty happy that I helped. If you don't like it, then you know what you need to do, just change it up, flex it a bit, see where you can improve on, 
and hopefully you'll have an exhaust build that can rival any build in game. Now that comes to the end of the video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did then a like and sub would be appreciated. Do comment if there's anything you're confused with or would change and I'll try my best to help you with it. But once again guys, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all again soon.